Mr. President, gentlemen of the convention, if we could just know where we are and whither we appear to be tending, we could all better judge of what to do and how to do it. We are now well into our fifth year since the policy was initiated with the avowed object and confident purpose of putting an end to slavery education. However, under the operation of that policy, that agitation has not only not ceased, but is constantly augmented. In my opinion, it will not cease until a crisis shall have been reached and passed. A house divided against itself cannot stand. I believe this government cannot endure permanently half slave and half free. I do not expect the union to be dissolved. I do not expect the house to fall. But I do expect it will cease to be divided. It will become all one thing or all the other. Either the opponents of slavery will arrest this further spread, place it where the public minds shall rest in the belief that it is on the course of ultimate extinction, or its advocates will press it forward until it shall become alike lawful in all the states, old as well as new, north as well as south. Have we no tendency to this latter condition? Our cause, then, must be entrusted to and conducted by its own undoubted friends. Those whose hands are free and whose hearts are in the world, who do care for the result. Two years ago, Republicans of this nation mustered some 1,300,000 strong. We did this under a single impulse of resistance to a common danger, with every external circumstance against us. Of strange discord, even hostile elements, we gathered from the four winds. We fought the battle through under the constant hot fire of a pampered, proud, and disciplined army. Did we brave all then only to falter now, now when that same enemy is wavering, the severed and belligerent? The result is not doubtful. We shall not fail. If we stand firm, we shall not fail. Wise counsels may accelerate or mistakes delay, but sooner or later, the victory is sure to come. 